Let's say that curiosity gets the better of you and that you finally give in to your innermost desires and download the Tor browser onto your system. Now what? Well, in this video, I'm going to go over some of the basic rules to live by whilst browsing the dark web, as well as some tips on what you should absolutely never do. So if you're interested in getting started, or even if you're a dread forum regular, it's worth sticking around just in case you find something you haven't implemented into your digital opsec. First of all, we need to assess the environments that you'll be browsing in. What do I mean by this? I mean both your digital and, to a lesser extent for general browsing, physical environments. Don't be browsing on the dark web where you're vulnerable to someone having a little shoulder surfing session, let's say, behind your back. But even more important than that is the software you'll be using. If you're going for some light-hearted browsing where you won't be interacting with anyone, sort of acting like an observer, if you will, on popular, well-known forums, news sites, etc., you can get away with using the safest search setting on the Tor browser whilst using Windows. But, and this is a big but, do not ever get comfortable in going on the dark web whilst using Windows. Using Windows whilst browsing the dark web is sort of like covering yourself in honey and running through the woods. I mean, sure, you'll be fine for a minute or two, keeping to the edges of the forest, but any more than that, you can guarantee Winnie the Pooh will be on you like a bat out of hell. Using a Linux-based host operating system is one option to ensure an increased level of security whilst on the dark web. Tails was a fan favourite in years gone with its ability to be booted into a live environment from a USB. However, more recently, secure operating systems like Cubes OS have been gaining in popularity, which, unlike Tails, relies on the user installing it within a virtual machine. I've also heard talk uh, of Parrot OS, which is a security-oriented Linux distro based on Debian, though I haven't really looked that deep into it, but it seems to be a pretty good alternative to Tails or Cubes OS if you don't want to run a live USB or Cubes in a VM. So. Now, with hosts out of the way, I'll touch just briefly on hardware. You'll get some people who swear by using a Libre-booted ThinkPad from 2006 that uses a distro they made from scratch, but realistically the majority of people that browse Tor don't do so with that kind of kit. But what I do think is something more people are able to do is to buy a cheap laptop, you know, whatever it is, as long as it can be formatted and have another operating system installed onto it, and install one of the aforementioned Linux-based operating systems and roll with that. Using another machine as opposed to your main machine for browsing the dark web acts as another level of compartmentalization, as well as a failsafe in case that GTA 6 dark web leaked copy you downloaded from Freeleaked Games Forum 6969.onion turns out to be ever so slightly malicious and starts trying to convince you to send $600 of Hawk to a coin to their wallet address. Now that you've secured your cheap ThinkPad with a Linux-based secure operating system, which means no Ubuntu, we can finally have some dark web fun. First of all, do not maximise your Tor browser window when you first open it. Unless the resolution of your display resembles that of a calculator, you'll notice upon opening the Tor web browser that it does not, by default, open full screen. This is by design, and serves to obfuscate the true resolution of your display, which, if known by anyone who may be trying to yoink you, could serve as another data point to single your browser session out of the crowd. The Tor browser furthers this by also altering the resolution at which the web browser displays within the window itself. On to the next one. This one goes without saying, but it's very important nonetheless. Always browse with the search setting set to safest, unless you are 100% certain the website you're on is not malicious. The general consensus is that if you're on a dark website and it has elements within it that ask you to turn on JavaScript, it is always best to assume it is malicious. JavaScript is the gateway element within a web page that could allow for scripts to exploit vulnerabilities within a certain version of the Tor software, or monitor your keystrokes through a keylogger, have a gander at your session browser cookies, etc, etc. Nothing too good. Now, this brings me on to another lesser known piece of advice that I haven't heard much about, but is something I absolutely swear by. If you're participating on a forum and you're typing quite often and to relatively great length, it is always best to type your messages within an external word processing application and then copy that text and paste it over into the Tor web browsing session. This eliminates any dangers from web pages you may visit from monitoring your keystrokes to then identify you through the way you type. 
speed, typing errors, and your vocabulary can all be used in de-anonymizing your Tor browser session. Of course, we have examples such as the spicy nature boy in a hut in Montana who was ultimately caught because his brother recognised the way in which he spoke when his manifesto was released. A very real issue that should be taken seriously indeed, especially on the dark web where you have no idea who is on the other side of the server you're connecting to through the Tor Relay. Now, let's say you're into downloading copies of GTA 6 from various forums whilst using Tor in order to sell to your audience on YouTube. This can be tricky to do so without getting your digital stuff yoinked by a malicious program, but we can try to mitigate some of the risks. Never trust anyone on the dark web. Again, that should go without saying, but if they're talking about how the file they're sending you is safe, but then ends with a .txt.exe, they're probably telling a few porkies. When executing files downloaded online, you should always disconnect your environment from the internet. This is just in case it is a malicious program, in which case it cannot phone home during its boinking of your system. Unplug the ethernet cable, turn on aeroplane mode, whatever you need to do to disconnect your environment from the internet before extracting, executing or compiling software found through the spooky dark web. But, of course, if what you're doing is just casual browsing of the forums with no intentions of downloading anything to your system, you should be fine as long as you implement the basic steps mentioned here and in addition, before I forget, the usual online etiquette goes for the dark web too, of course. Be nice, don't be a meanie, don't give people a reason to single you out the crowd. One of the ways people get caught through their use of the dark web is by creating a name for themselves. If your number one priority is to not get caught slash de-anonymized, don't single yourself out. Don't stick to a single username, email, password, user handle, wallet address, whatever it may be. Constantly alter the way you talk, the way you greet people, the lexicon you use. There should be nothing in common with any of your online personas. But what if you're thinking right now about how in the world you're going to find all of these different Onion forums in the first place? Well, dark web search engines may catch your attention. There are a few reputable ones to choose from, but if you're looking for some information regarding them, I advise you to go to the Onion subreddit where you can find everything you'll need. People often romanticise the dark web to be something extraordinary, something that only the cool and mysterious hacker Mr. 4chan would ever use. This isn't even remotely close to the reality of the situation. The dark web is mainly a collection of data leak brokers, forums, people role-playing as providing the ultimate money solution. It's just like the clear web, there's going to be some prohibited stuff somewhere down there. But as long as you keep your wits about you and don't go searching for that stuff, you will be fine. So. Stick to the popular sites, don't interact where possible, and if you do, for whatever reason, ensure you utilise an external word processor to type up messages, always use different account information when using an account, and just be nice. There's no need to rile up the hornet's nest. I hope you can forgive me for not providing you with a starting onion site to begin your exploration with, but as you may or may not know, YouTube isn't fond of its users displaying onion addresses, so you'll just have to begin your exploration with a clear net search engine or go into the onion Reddit, uh, subreddit, sorry, as I said before. Don't go pasting onion sites in the comments or wherever, YouTube is very much not a fan of anything ending in dot onion, so keep that stuff to Reddit or direct messages you know, whatever. It shouldn't be too difficult to find a good starting point, regardless in where or how you start in finding your onion addresses to then get into that gateway and start searching for different onion sites. I hope this was a useful starting guide for those new to the dark web, and I equally hope some of you who may be regular browsers of the Tor landscape found something useful here. And for those of you who are new to browsing on the dark web, be prepared to be slightly underwhelmed. The dark web isn't everything what CNN chokes it up to be. Mr. 4chan is just a myth. Like the video if you found it helpful or interesting, and subscribe if you really enjoyed it. Check out my other videos if you can, and I'll see you in my next video.